if you knew how much God loves you, you would be crying with joy. I'll be sharing with you my experience of beyond the realm and the truth about identity of the so-called angels and also about the parallel universe. During surgery on June 26, 2012, I lived an experience that I have to share. I was in front of 15 to 20 people who were standing on a path of white marble. I knew the material was marble, but it yet it wasn't marbled. It was sparkling white, like snow, a pure whiteness. By the roadside, there were low, straight walls that were made of the same material. The angles between the very straight path and the small walls were extremely straight. I knew that this path was part of an immense garden that I couldn't see anymore. This image of a dream was the last moment where an infinite number of things had happened. I forgot these happenings as if a door or a book had closed, and I was seeing the cover of the book knowing that I had just been reading it. On the road, people were standing. I believe that other people were behind the road and that I came from there. The people behind the road could be numerous. I knew that those people were extremely beautiful, in excellent health because they were radiating beauty and health, and they were well-dressed. I was amazed that being well-dressed could be important, and it wasn't something superficial. Above all, I knew that between them there was a very good atmosphere where all is in perfect harmony. They had a shared love, and they had been infinitely kind towards each other and towards myself. By the word kind, I mean in the sense of loving, even though they didn't know each other and also didn't know me. But they were real friends in the highest sense of the word and persons at the height of growth of their humanity and with a perfect sense of team spirit between them. I knew all this about them, but I didn't see their faces or clothes. They looked like white lights or more descriptive, like living torchlights. These people were resplendent with beauty, health, and mutual harmony, without doing anything. Everything was peaceful and static. While I was looking at them, I heard, Mrs. M, you can wake up. Everything went well. At that moment, I had an impression of a horrible noise, like being transported on a stretcher making a very aggressive noise. At that moment, I have the memory of these people giving me a very fluid arm movement, which meant goodbye and until soon. I also know that I had an extremely short vision about life on Earth, what seemed like a hell for me. I saw fires and mass graves, as if seeing a movie in 360 degrees in a few seconds. I was thinking, but why is this guy calling me and saying everything went well? That's not possible. It couldn't be better than what I just have been seeing. Why does he want me to return into this hell, this noise? How awful. Then, I had the impression of being back down in my body and thinking, oh yes, it's true that I'm coming out of anesthesia and that this is his world which is in theory reality. I needed to come back to this reality, even though the world I just saw was a thousand times better, that's the hard reality that I have to reintegrate. For me, this was an impression of a really, really dreadful downfall. At the same time, I said to myself, fortunately that he called me back. If he wouldn't have, I might be dead. There was no chance that I would have come back on my own as I was very far from thinking about this world down here. I felt too good. A kind of gratitude for the person that called me back, as without him I would have been staying. I then thought about my duties toward my family. Oh dear, I almost forgot them, my little family and my life from here. An impression of getting lost in an eternal present. I, who am so responsible and in control. Over there, the world that I saw was so tempting that I couldn't leave it. I didn't think at anything else except the people I saw and how loving they were. Afterwards, when waking up, I had an impression of uneasiness and ill-being, in contrast to the total well-being when I was in contact with those superior beings. I felt an impression of abruptness. Maybe the doctor woke me too fast and I didn't get the time to forget. Maybe you can have similar dreams, but you always forget them. I felt much worse than after the other anesthesia. My left thigh was painful. I was cold and shivering. The anesthetist then told me that there had been no incident and that this can depend on the product they used. I also have to say that I was astonished about myself for appreciating this world without nature and adoring this white marble. Normally, I don't like marble at all, and I hate not seeing nature.
a perfect world for me should include nature. I said to myself, nature is not so important in life as there is such a good atmosphere there, with only humans. Here I'm continuing with an analysis from questions that strongly arose in the following hours and days after this experience. A clear impression that the world I reached is superior and that one or more parallel worlds exist. I had a Catholic education and a Buddhist sensibility, and then I'm truly searching for the purpose of life. A clear impression that there was a real downfall, a descent characterized by a horrible but familiar noise that is our world. I have cue questions about the downfall of Adam and Eve despite my not believing in this. Today I think that there is some truth behind that I re-experienced their downfall. But I still have questions. What did they do to fall so deeply? Asa superior world exists. Why are we coming to Earth where life is so hard? Why are humans choosing a lower world while they were much better off? What have we done to deserve this? Our world would be like a hard entity and on a lower plane than a more perfect world. A total trust in a being that must know why this has to function this way and not another way. Why our imperfect world exists. That's how it is, and it's for the best. Needless to ask questions. A clear conviction that those beings have not been angels like they are described in books. They could be saints. My brother, who is very Christian, told me, you saw the communion of the saints, what seems quite plausible to me. A clear impression that the world I saw is in between us and what we call paradise. A strange challenge of my love for nature after having seen this infinitely human world without nature. As if I got a knowledge that ecology and pollution is a detail. Of course, in comparison to this perfect world, what does it matter? Nevertheless, I'm staying with the same human values and the respect of nature. According to the expression of Jesus, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, as a reply to somebody who didn't want to pay his taxes on the pretext that the Lord is more important than the material, meaning respecting the values of the terrestrial world while you are there. They are worlds that cannot be compared, very different systems. The certitude that the beauty of the world and the love that we know are but samples, in small touches, of those infinite ones that I sensed. Total comprehension and adhesion to the myth of Plato's cave. The question about, why was I shown these things? Why did I get this information, this revelations about the downfall, the love and the real beauty? Why did I deserve this? Or for what purpose did I get to know this? The need to transmit, at least to my sisters and brothers having had the same education as I, to whom I'm happy to pass on the good news, an expression dear to Christians. A better world exists. Our sufferings are not in vain. The conviction that religions are giving us partial information, each in their own language, in order to say those unspeakable things. They are all true, and they are all complementary. I was thinking this already before. They all tell us in pictures what you cannot describe with words, but only the experience counts. In the following weeks, I came across a quotation about an appearance of the Virgin. If you knew how much God loves you, you would be crying with joy. This sentence was in a text, and I sensed this sentence very strongly when I came across. I understood it with a great depth, a great emotion, crying with joy, much more than before my experience. Thinking at these beings is giving me great emotions. But how telling you? They are but words. This inspiring story has held us in its grip, but it would not be complete if we didn't know what exactly happens to the people that sinned so much when they meet God face to face. Watch this next to understand that.